ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to London. It's April right now, so now's the perfect moment to give you my guide, my tour of London during the month of April. Hopefully, if you're planning a visit here during April, give you some insight into uh, things to do, things to look out for, key events, um, and if you're planning a trip at any other time of year, a glimpse into what you're missing out on. Um, I'm starting at Victoria Station, I just got the train to Victoria there. I'm gonna head to Buckingham Palace, which is a short walk this way, and then from there, I'm actually on the hunt for a hot cross bun. So I think I'm gonna head from Buckingham Palace down to Trafalgar Square. Hopefully we can find a hot cross bun just off there. But first of all, let's head to Buckingham Palace. And uh, on the way there, I'll tell you about some of the key events um, to look out for in April. By April, spring should have sprung and the weather should be warming up a little. The weather in London is, however, always highly unpredictable. April and the hope of warmer weather does bring with it some outdoor events, most notably the boat race, the annual rowing race on the River Thames between Oxford and Cambridge Universities, and the London Marathon. The dates change each year, but they are very often in April. Easter is a big holiday here in the UK. The dates change each year, and so Easter can vary from March to April, and it's the first bank holiday of the year since New Year's Day, and a double one at that. Good Friday and Easter Monday, which for many is a long weekend. It is worth checking the opening times of any places you plan to visit during the Easter weekend and holiday. Easter Sunday is one of the two days, the other being Christmas Day, when many businesses over a certain square foot are legally obliged to remain shut. But unlike Christmas Day, most that can open and usually do on Sundays probably will well, but certainly check before travelling somewhere. Welcome to Buckingham Palace, primary central London home of Her Majesty the Queen. There's always a flag flying on the roof of the palace. If it's the Queen's Royal Standard, which you can see here, it means the Queen is at the palace. However, when she isn't at the palace, the Union Jack will be flying as it is today. Buckingham Palace is the official London residence of Her Majesty the Queen. The palace has been the central London residence of the United Kingdom's monarch since the accession of Queen Victoria in 1837 to whom there is a memorial monument in front of the palace, which features a statue of Queen Victoria sitting on her throne, facing down the mall towards the city. The palace is a venue for many royal events and ceremonies, including state banquets, lunches, dinners, receptions and garden parties. Her Majesty also holds weekly audiences with the Prime Minister here. You can visit yourself as the palace opens to the public each summer for tours. The balcony front and centre is the famous spot where the royal family make public appearances on occasions and during ceremonies. It's a magnet for tourists and visitors to London hoping to get a glimpse of the royal family and the changing of the guard is also a huge draw and very popular with visitors. Okay, from Buckingham Palace, which is behind me, I'm going to head down the mall to Trafalgar Square. The finish line of the London Marathon will be about, probably about halfway down there um, on Marathon Day. So. Uh, Take a look at that and uh, yeah, the hunt for a hot cross bun will start down in Trafalgar Square. Um, the, uh, the amount of international languages, you can hear the crowd speaking here, it's pretty uh, phenomenal. Um, I think a lot of Brits underestimate the, uh, the international popularity of our royal family. Yeah. Huge crowd all over the world. Right, Trafalgar Square. Normally I'd walk through the park, St James's Park. It's uh, a little bit more picturesque than walking down the road, but uh, you might as well complete the last few hundred metres of the London Marathon. I'm not going to do the whole 26 miles. Marathon Day is a huge event here in town and there's lots of road closures and lots of spectators here to cheer on the runners in the 26.2 mile marathon. Different runners have different motivations. Many of the amateurs will be raising money for charity, completing a lifelong ambition and obviously the elite runners will be trying to win the race. 
actually there were great views that just about through the trees make out Big Ben. You probably won't be able to see them on camera, but you can just see the tip of Big Ben popping out there and the London Eye through the, uh, through the tree line. Okay, I'm gonna head from the palace along the mall to Trafalgar Square where hopefully I can find a hot cross bun. And if and when we do find hot cross buns, I will explain for those of you that don't know what they are and their seasonal significance. Okay, if you're running the London Marathon, your race will end probably somewhere around here. Just just in the shadow of Buckingham Palace. Um, but uh, today's not about fitness. It's about hot cross buns so, uh, and Easter eggs. So uh, let's head down to uh, Trafalgar Square, see if I can't find a hot cross bun. This road is the mall. It runs from Buckingham Palace where we began to Trafalgar Square where we are headed. From the Victoria Memorial to the Admiralty Arch which we will pass through at the end, the mall is half a nautical mile long. To the left at the Buckingham Palace end we have Green Park and then St James's Palace. And to the right is St James's Park and Horse Guards Parade. The mall was designed and is used as a ceremonial route to Buckingham Palace. The Road is red on purpose to be the road equivalent of a red carpet for our monarch to escort visiting heads of state in a state carriage up to the palace during state visits. The curved building and gateway to the mall at the end here is Admiralty Arch, originally constructed as the residence of the United Kingdom's first sea lord, aka the admiral in charge of the navy and also the admiralty itself. There are currently plans to convert it into a hotel. Okay guys, welcome to Trafalgar Square. Um, I'm going to head to a cafe. I'm going to head to a cafe below the church on the corner of Trafalgar Square. See if they've got any uh, hot cross buns. If not, the search will continue. Trafalgar Square here hosts many cultural events throughout the year and they're often free to attend and usually really good. I've been to quite a few community events here, Chinese New Year, Diwali, St Patrick's Day, Africa in the Square to name just a few and each year Norway give Britain Christmas trees and London takes pride of place here. It's decorated in traditional Norwegian style, there's a lighting ceremony and it becomes a real focal point for carol services throughout the festive season. The uh, was the world's smallest uh, police station. It's now a uh, broom cupboard. That's another story. So long, I know I've grown. I can't wait. This is where I'm hoping to find a hot cross bun, St Martin's in the Fields Church. Okay, let's see if I can give you a quick glimpse in the church. Oh, we burst into flames already. And then we're going to the, uh, the cafe below. This rather space age rotund building next to St Martin's in the Fields Church is in fact the entrance to the church's crypt below. There are signs here explaining why those that can should use the stairs, however I'm going to use the lift and share that with you because it's like something out of a Hollywood movie. There's one down button, minus one, the crypt, how many lifts have that and it's a very cinematic way to get into the, into the crypt below the church. Just... 
I'm looking for a hot cross bun and I'm hoping there's no better place to find one than in the cafe of a Christian church because they're synonymous with Easter. They are very popular here during the whole Easter period. Traditionally they would have been eaten at the end of Lent on Good Friday but people give up different things for Lent now so they're probably available all year and they're just synonymous with the Easter holidays. I can't actually see any here with the other cakes though. Good. Ah, they do have them, they're on top of the counter, I just wasn't looking in the right place. Okay, success. I've got a hot cross bun. The only thing is, don't we have them like buttered? I like them buttered rather than just plain and dry. Maybe I'm expecting too much for a pound. They'll be good. No butter. It's okay, just about, just about fresh enough, just about moist enough, not to need butter. If you get them from the supermarket, you need butter. Coffee's okay. As you can see, hot cross buns are pretty simple. It's just a simple sweet glazed bun with a cross on top filled with currants, raisins and spices. If you're in town, you should definitely visit the cafe in the crypt. Phenomenal architecture down here. Amazing value for money. Very central, very tranquil. And the proceeds go to help the work of the church, which includes the charity Connections, who help the homeless and the vulnerable. As cool as the lift is, I better take the stairs. Barn, a cafe in the crib was okay. I'm gonna head up to uh, one of London's best bakers and uh, in Seven Dials and see what their Easter offering is. Um, if you do one thing when you're in London, regardless of what month it is, definitely go for a meal in um, a cafe in the crypt. Um, the proceeds of the cafe. Um, Profits go to the church's charity, Connections, who help the homeless and the vulnerable. And I think they even, they, they source the ingredients ethically. I'm not gonna lie, it's like school dinners, but not in a bad way, I quite like school dinners, it's just simple. Um, but it's also really great value for money. Very central, as you can see, um, just off Trafalgar Square. And uh, yeah, if you do one thing, have one meal there. Uh, they do breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and um, the proceeds that that meal will uh, help the vulnerable. And um, yeah, um, the thing with homeless charities, I mean, there's divided opinion about how best you can help people. Whether you give the money directly to the homeless on the streets, but um, the criticism of that is obviously it will. It, keeps the people on the streets. Uh, it can prevent them looking for help. Um, and often people need more than just money. Um, they're not, it's not just a lack of money that got them there. Um, they need more help than just hard cash. Um, but the, um, the criticism of charities, they can be expensive, they can waste money. Um, the fact is, the charity sector is one of the best sectors to work in here in London. Um, it's one of the most financially rewarding, which is wrong. Um, however, you can download the financial reports of Connections on their website. I have. It's not bad reading. The staff bill is not unreasonable. The trustees don't have, I don't think they have any remuneration, let alone ridiculous levels of it. Um, and yeah, um, you'll be helping the poor and there's more than more than one way to measure a person's poverty um, 
you can have all the money in the world. And uh, if you don't have, um, I guess, humility and benevolence, you're still a poor person. Right, right ahead. Anyway, the key point of that was, just go for dinner. Um, rant about charity. They don't need your money, they just need your custom. They'll take your money. There's donation boxes, and you can just go for dinner. As you can tell from my personal opinions and concerns on charity, I'm cynical, and that's sad, but I actually believe we need to give more. Be it time or money, or if you have neither, just share your chosen cause with friends, family, or via social media. I want to live in a benevolent society. Governments have never managed to end poverty, and not from a lack of trying. So it's up to the people, it's up to us. Some philanthropists use charity evaluators who say the worst way to pick a charity are the financial metrics, like the overhead and salary percentages. The most effective way to pick a charity should be based on their effectiveness of changing lives, and it's true, the salary of executives on paper is not a good guide to the effectiveness of how many lives a charity will impact, or save even. However, I still look at both. Money and results are fine, but also emotion and ethics play a part. If a charity is so big and complicated they need to pay the CEO and executives more than the Prime Minister, I'm personally not feeling it. It's like considering if philanthropy or charity is better, as I said, neither are perfect. So best do both. Charity is giving someone a fish, philanthropy is giving them the fishing rod. In the homeless context, the fishing rod is job training, mental health and addiction support, which take time. So in the meanwhile, the charity and the fish is still very much required. So if you want to give money or food to people on the streets, do. But maybe give an equal amount to a charity like Connections working to help them get off the streets. Go for coffee and cafe in the crypt, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I don't want charities I support to compete with the private sector at executive level. I want them to show more restraint than the public sector at senior levels while supporting the vulnerable with above average salaries and benefits for the lowest paid. I want them to have socialist ideals while not being anti-capitalist. I don't want fundraisers with aggressive sales and marketing tactics from the private sector. I want supporters to have a collection wearing woolly cardigans. I want cake and coffee mornings. I want the charities I support to be fair and nice, and if being fair and nice makes them less ruthlessly effective, so be it. Charity, mercy, philanthropy and benevolence are not limited to the wealthy, and I don't believe they should create the wealthy either. And ultimately, it's up to you and me, the donors, to decide what's fair and unfair, right or wrong. Welcome to Seven Dials. It's called Seven Dials because <laughs> there are six sundials up there. Um, but that's another story. I've made guides to Covent Garden which tell the full story of Seven Dials and the Covent Garden area which is down there. I'm going to head to the end of this street. It's a bit late in the day to be going to the Bakers, but that's where we're going. See what they've got left. There's an amazing coffee shop here, a mom of coffee. Queue out the door as usual. Monmouth Coffee is one of this area's most renowned coffee shops, well one of London's most renowned coffee shops. Great place to get beans, to make coffee at home and as the queue out the door suggests a great place to get a cup of coffee while you're here in Seven Dials or visiting Covent Garden. At the end of this street is a bakery called Bread Ahead, they have a bakery and bakery school in London's Borough Market and they're probably as famous for their donuts as they are for their for their bread. So um, I'm going to see what they've got on offer for Easter. Any seasonal special treats? Okay, here's the Breadhead Bakery. Well, Breadhead Store, Bakeries, Borough Market. Again, I've made uh, tours of Borough Market multiple times. Um, yeah, amazing bread. Let's see what they've got for Easter. If they've got anything left. Okay, we're on the edge of Seven Dials here, which itself is on the edge of Covent Garden. So if you're in the area, this is a great spot to pick up a loaf of bread. Also, fabulous snacks. You can see hot cross buns. They're renowned for their donuts. And they've got some seasonal specials. Hot cross bun donuts. Okay. Got hot cross bun donuts. Uh, taste test. It's gonna get destroyed. That's a 
Bye. Cream tastes like tastes like hot cross buns. I'm going to tuck into this. Head back down into uh, Covent Garden. Okay. Black filter coffee from Monmouth Coffee. I couldn't walk past. The coffee is amazing. I get my. I often get coffee beans from there. I should try it first. It's all right here. I'll tell you how good it is. Yeah, great coffee. Um, Right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, this little tour of London. A look at the month of April, things to do in the month of April here in town. Um, quick trip to Buckingham Palace, um, Trafalgar Square, Cafe in the Crypt. Definitely recommend a trip whenever you visit London to uh, Cafe in the Crypt. Um, as I said earlier, um, the proceeds go to help the vulnerable. Bread ahead, phenomenal donut from Bread ahead. The bread's good too. Um, I've got the store here, uh, which is very central in Covent Garden. Or if you're in Borough Market, um, the bakery's there. The bakery's got loads of classes, and they uh, they have a market still. A borough market um, and of course coffee from Monmouth so thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this little talk and uh, Do you know what? By the time until next time from seven dials which as I said if you want a little bit more information on um, Covent Garden and seven dials there's a, uh, a video available all about Covent Garden I so until next time, toodles. I spilled my coffee.